In this video, you're going to learn what you can do if you've lost the love for your game. Hey there, I'm Eli Straw, mental performance coach and founder of successstartwithin.com. When you've lost this passion to play, so you no longer really have that love or that motivation to train and to perform your sport, it can be devastating. It can be devastating because it can make you feel like you've lost your identity. A lot of times, and for the most part, athletes tie their identity up in their performance. It's something I've seen a lot in the athletes I work with. It's something that I personally did myself when I was playing. This is what's so heartbreaking when you lose a love for the game because it then feels like you're almost losing love for yourself because you're losing your identity. Another thing that happens is when you do go to perform, you do go to practice, you do go to games, you might feel like a fraud because you feel like all of these other guys or all of these other girls, they are so passionate, but I'm not as passionate. I don't feel that level of desire and that drive to perform like they do. Where has that gone? Is there something wrong with me? Should I just quit my sport? And that right there can be the most frustrating question that you end up asking yourself. Is it time for me to step away because I'm not feeling this passion anymore? But if you're wanting to regain this love, that means that the, on some level there is motivation within you to keep performing and to reclaim that passion. So what we're gonna do in this video is outline five tips that you can use to regain the passion to play. Tip number one is you wanna check for other factors. Whenever I'm working with an athlete on how to regain their love for the game, the first place that we look is, are there some other factors that are contributing to you losing this love for the game? Now, what can these factors look like? Well, number one, it could be a negative coach. If you're dealing with a coach right now who you just don't get along with, who you feel like has a very negative environment, that could be causing you to not enjoy playing as much. We're not blaming the coach, and none of this is about blaming anybody else. It's just about identifying and recognizing what is causing you to lose this love for the game. Another factor could be some performance anxiety or maybe some high expectations. Now, this can be directly linked to a coach or a parent because maybe they have very high expectations for you. Maybe your coach has you on a very short leash. So as soon as you make one mistake, he yanks you out of the game or he yells at you or she yells at you during practice. If you're experiencing that, it's very easy to then feel some performance anxiety or some fear of failure because you don't want to make a mistake. And everything now becomes hyper-focused on, I can't make a mistake, I have to perform well. When you have that kind of resistance and that kind of tension in your game, it's very easy to then really lose that love for the game because you're not playing with joy you're playing with fear. So you first want to really identify, are there any factors right now that are causing me to lose the love for the game? Because then what you want to do is work through those factors. So if you identify that perfectionism is really causing you to not love the game anymore, you feel like you just have to be perfect. If you aren't perfect, you just tear yourself down and you can't stand that anymore. Then you need to work through perfectionism. You need to get some tools, apply them, and learn how to manage yourself, evaluate your performance in a better way so you're not having to be so perfect. If it's anxiety, you wanna work on using some tools to reduce anxiety. And as these external or internal factors are reduced, that's gonna then allow you to enjoy the game a little bit more. The second tip is to change positions. Changing positions is not always possible, but if it is possible, it can be very, very powerful. The example I can use for changing positions comes from my own life. When I graduated college, I was very frustrated with baseball, but there was still a part of me that wanted to play on at some kind of level. I just knew I wasn't finished with the game yet. Now, all through college and all through high school, I was a shortstop and a third baseman. But at that moment, I was just fed up with, with hitting, with fielding. I was very exhausted by it all. So what I decided to do was change positions. That next year, I went to a pitching coach and I learned how to pitch. I had never pitched before in my life. I knew that it was a very silly almost thing to do, but there was a piece of me that still wanted to play and I thought, okay, this is gonna be my avenue back into the game. And lucky enough, I was able to play some independent baseball here in the States that summer. And then the next summer, I was able to go play professionally over in Europe. And by that time I was pitching, but I also went back to playing shortstop. So the point is, if you aren't feeling like you love your game anymore, you love your sport, maybe it's time to bring some excitement back into it. Maybe it's time to bring some challenge back into it. And changing positions, if possible, can give you that challenge. Tip number three is to remember why you started. 
Remembering why you started needs to be an exercise where you sit down and you evaluate yourself and you really do some introspection and you think, why did I start playing in the first place? When I was a kid and I had all of these choices, why did I pick this sport? As I got older, why did I stick with this sport? By identifying why you started, you're going to get to that core why, that core reason as to why you wanted to do your sport in the first place. Maybe it was just that, hey, I was good at it. And that's something you're going to have to figure out for yourself. But if it's, I just loved being out there with my teammates. I just love the feeling of throwing the football. I just love the feeling of playing tennis. I just love the feeling of competing and seeing myself get faster on the track. When you identify those whys, that's going to reignite that passion because you are identifying the reason that you had that passion in the first place. Tip number four follows tip number three in that you want to shift your focus. Right now, are you focused too much on stats? Are you focused too much on winning and losing? Are you focused too much on what your coach thinks of you, what your teammates think of you, what your parents think of you? Maybe it's time to shift your focus simply back onto the game. When you don't have passion anymore, when you've lost the love for your sport, A lot of times this is caused by you thinking too much externally. You're worried too much about outcomes. If you can bring all that attention back onto yourself, which is why I say identifying why you started in the first place is such a helpful thing to do, is that you can shift your focus and say, okay, I'm going to focus on the things that I enjoy. So once you identify why you played your sport in the first place, now it's time to actually apply that during practices and games. Instead of thinking, I'm playing today because I've got to get this stat line. You let go of that thinking. It's going to be difficult. Don't get me wrong, but you work to let go of that thinking and you shift your focus on to this is why I'm playing today. This is what I want to focus on because this is what I enjoy about my sport. And right now my goal is to bring that joy back into the game. Tip number five is by far the most difficult because it's to step away. If you need to, if it's time, stepping away can often be the best thing for you. I'm not saying stepping away forever. What I'm saying is taking some time, stepping back from your sport, and figuring out, do I miss it? If you miss it, then you need to get back to it. If not, then maybe that's your answer. Maybe that shows you that it really was time to quit. Because there is a time that every athlete has to face when it's time to quit their sport. But I hate to see athletes quit their sport because of loss of passion if it's not really what they want to do because that loss of passion is because of some other kind of factor. So you want to step away. Now, I encourage you if you do step away to make sure that you're also working through any of the other factors that you identified. For example, if you identified that performance anxiety was causing you to lose the love for the game, and so you decide to step away, that is a very, very natural thing to do. And it's sometimes the best choice for you because you remove yourself from that anxious situation. But You're never going to figure out if you're truly okay to go back and play and if you love the game unless you begin putting in work to overcome that performance anxiety. So when you step away, if there are factors you need to work on, make sure you're working on those. But when the time comes and you're ready to go back to it, when you come back to play, likely you're going to have a lot more passion because you have separated yourself from your sport. Now, I know that when you lose the love for the game, when you lose this passion, it is not easy at all. But what you have to recognize is that The responsibility to bring this love back into the game, it's yours. If you sit around and you wait for this love to come back into the game, it's likely not going to come back. But if you go out and you try to find it, you try to find that joy every time you perform, then you are going to find it. You're going to find what you're looking for. So right now, if you're struggling with a loss of passion, I encourage you to put these five tips into practice. You don't have to use all of them. Just choose which ones are really the best one for you and apply them. And if you apply them, I'm very confident that you're going to be able to find your answer, whether that truly is it's time to step away or if it is finding that love again in your game. Thank you for watching and I wish you the best of success in all that you do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about one-on-one mental performance coaching, head over to successstartwithin.com.